Today, everyone, today we are talking about section 8.4, the discriminant and the quadratic formula. So we got a few learning targets today. I can use the discriminant to determine the number of solutions of a quadratic. I will memorize the quadratic formula. We will do that part in class. We'll talk about how to memorize it and stuff like that. Um, we're going to solve it, solve equations with it, and then we're going to come back and use vertical motion again. All right, so the discriminant, there's two parts. The first is the formula which is b squared minus 4ac, and then there's when do we use it. And what it is, is it's used to determine the number and type of solutions of a quadratic. So when we have the discriminant, so there's two parts. You calculate it, and then there's the interpreting part. So when we're interpreting, what we're doing is we're looking at the number and going, is it a positive number, is it a negative number, or is it zero? We don't care how positive it is. If it's one, a thousand, a million, it doesn't matter. A positive number, all of the discriminants, if they're positive, all act the same. So this is going to be like a little reference chart. If it's positive, that means there are two real solutions. In other words, if you think back to chapter 7 when we talked about graphing, that means it's going to intersect the x-axis twice. That's what it's meaning. If it's zero, there is one real solution. And again, we talked about this back in chapter seven. That would mean the vertex is on the x-axis. And lastly, negative. Well, we know that there's two real solutions, one real solution, or no real solutions. This would be that it does not intersect the x-axis. So the discriminant is very much so related to what do we see on the graph. Again, positive means two, negative means none, and zero means one. And so what we will do, it says use the discriminant to determine the number of real solutions of each quadratic equation. Again, if you need to identify, this is in standard form, identify A, B, and C. Again, it is B squared minus 4 times A times C. And again, anytime I am putting a value in for a variable, I am going to put in parentheses so that I make sure... I do not make a mistake on my calculator. So, and I'm going to put this all in at one go. So I'm going to put in, in parentheses, 6 squared minus 4 times 2 times 5. I get negative 4. Now the interpreting part, I look at my table and go, oh, this is a negative number, so that means there are no real solutions. Or I could write NRS, either way. The middle one is one that when we are graphing it got some people as a trick question. But again, there is no middle term. So that means that b equals 0. So I'm going to go 0 squared minus 4 times 1. And again, that negative goes with the 7, so that means it's negative 7. When I calculate it, I get positive 28. Since this is a positive number, we would say that are two real solutions. The last one is straightforward, so I'd like you to pause the video and try that one on your own. Again, you're going to do b squared minus 4ac. In this case, you get 0, which means there's one real solution. Again, it doesn't matter how positive, how negative. Positive numbers have 2. Negative numbers have none. If it's 0, you get 1. The other thing we can do is we can look at a graph. 
we can count the number of intercepts that there are and determine the type of discriminant. So like the first one, for example, we count that there are two intercepts. So that means there are two solutions. So that means the discriminant is positive. So I'd like you to pause the video and try each of the next three on your own. Hopefully you got the second one was negative because there are no intercepts. So that means there are no solutions. The third one here, the vertex, was the only point. So that means there's one, so it's zero. And the last one, again, is positive because there are two intercepts. Again, the direction that the graph has nothing to do with how many intercepts there are. All right, the quadratic formula. We will go over the quadratic formula song in class. We will talk about this. But this is the quadratic formula. Negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And there's actually a couple hidden formulas within the quadratic formula that we will talk about in class but for now, I'm just going to show you how to use the quadratic formula. So, again, like any other time, the quadratic equation must equal zero. And for some reason, whenever we're working with the quadratic formula, more often than not, it seems that it's not equal to zero. And again, so when I subtract this 3x over, I have to write it in standard form. So my quadratic term, my linear term, my constant term equal to zero. And again, A, B, and C. Now, how we are going to do this is a three-step process. Step one is to plug in the values into the formula. So again, the formula is going to be x equals the negative of B. So I'm going to write it the negative of negative 3, just to make sure I get my signs correct plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2 times a. So that is step one, plug in the numbers. Once I have the numbers plugged in, I'm going to do what I call step two, and that's clean up. And when I'm cleaning up, I'm just cleaning up each of the parts. So, for example, the negative of negative 3 is 3. My denominator, 2 times 2, that's 4. And then I'm going to calculate the part underneath the square root. And some of you are going to recognize b squared minus 4ac is the discriminant. So, yes, we are going to calculate the discriminant. I'm leaving the square root there. There's a couple of reasons why, first of all, if it's negative, I know it's no real solution, so I could just stop right there doing what I'm going and go no real solution. All right, now I'm going to do step three. So step two is clean up. Step three is to calculate my answer. I'm going to put this in my calculator. If you have the TI-84, that you can do the alpha y equals thing, enter this. I would do the subtraction one first, so 3 minus the square root of 49 over 4. If you don't, if you have an 83, what you'll need to do is go parenthesis, 3 minus the square root of 49, close parenthesis, and actually with the 83, I think you get parentheses there. So you got to do double close and then go divided by 4. And if you have issues with this, Make sure you ask in class. But when you do the subtraction one, you're going to get negative one. And when you do the adding one, you're going to get five halves. Or if you do a decimal, you'll get 2.5. I will accept either one because if you're using the 83s, you'll get a decimal every time. If you're using the 84s and the alpha y equals option, it will spit you out a fraction. All right, I am going to walk you through the whole process again. If you feel comfortable that you're like, I think I can follow along and do it on my own, by all means, give it a try. So again, before you can do anything, it has to equal zero. So we are going to subtract 
the 3 and make it equal to 0. If you need to go and underline and identify A, B, and C because it helps you, by all means. Our step 1 is to plug everything in. So negative of B, in this case it's 1, plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4 times A times C all over 2A. Step two is clean up. So we are going to clean up the front, calculate the denominator, and calculate our discriminant, which in this case is 25. And then our last step is to put everything into the calculator. Again, alpha y equals if you can. And you should get negative 3 halves plus positive 1. Again, when I'm doing the calculations, I have to do this as two separate calculations. Negative 1 minus the square root of 25 over 4, and then negative 1 plus the square root of 25 over 4. The quadratic formula is quite useful because when we have word problems, there's a lot of times they're not factorable and therefore they're difficult to solve. Well, the thing about the quadratic formula is it always works. We kind of save the best for last, in my opinion, because we can always use the quadratic formula to solve. Even if it's factorable, even if you could use square, square roots, the quadratic formula works on every single quadratic problem. And that's why it's personally my favorite method, because while it might be more work, I know I'm going to get an answer, and it's going to be worth it. Again, vertical motion, if you don't have it hammered into your head already, negative 16t squared plus vt plus s. So it says UE is standing on a diving platform 24 feet above the pool. Again, starting height. She jumps from the platform with an initial vertical velocity of 8. So there's our v. How long until she lands in the water? That's when h is 0. So we are going to say that 0 equals, again, gravity pulling us down plus our initial velocity plus our starting height. Again, A, B, C. And I don't have to worry about a GCF or doing anything. It's equal to 0, so I can go straight to the quadratic formula. So at this point, I would like you to pause the video and try solving this one on your own using the quadratic formula. So again, I did step one here in red where I plugged everything in. So the negative of b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Again, step two I did here in green where I cleaned up, said the negative of 8 is negative 8. 2 times ne negative 16 is negative 32 in my denominator. I calculated my discriminant and I got 1600. Step three I did here in black is where I actually did the two calculations, negative 8 minus the square root of 1,600 over negative 32, and then did it again with plus. And again, if we were just solving, that would be our answer. But we have a word problem, so there's context. And again, UE cannot land before she in the water before she jumps. So therefore, our answer is 3 halves. Or, since it's a word problem, I would convert this to a decimal and say one and a half seconds. If you want to write it as three halves, by all means, go for it. But typically with word problems, we would convert it to a decimal. This is a word problem that was in chapter 7.5 when we were doing the graphing thing. We talked about this word problem. Today we're going to solve it what's called algebraically, which just means not graphing. So I would like you to try this problem on your own. So pause the video, try writing the equation and solving it all on your own. All right. So again, 0 equals, because the target's on the ground, negative 16t squared gravity plus the 150 feet per second is our velocity. In this case, it says 3 feet down. So that means we're 3 feet below ground, or we'd say that our Starting height is negative 3. And then, again, step 1, plug everything in. That's what I did in black. 2, clean up the parts. 
three. Now, in this case, we get two positive answers, 0 0.02. If we think about it, if we're launching something from below the ground, at some point it's going to reach ground level on its way out. That's what this 0.02 is. So if we think about it again, we're at ground level, and we're starting three feet below. It's going to launch up and over. So this 0.02 is right here. That's not our answer. That's not when it lands on the ground. We're looking for our answer over there, and that's what the 9.35 is. And again, about because it's a rounded answer. Again, we will do a couple like these in class, so if you have questions, come prepared to ask. Otherwise, have a great day, everyone.